Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police looking for a suspect who randomly started shooting at a group of people. Up next, the vehicle they're looking for this morning. Idalia is expected to strengthen into a major hurricane as it crawls toward the Gulf Coast. Up next, where it's expected to have the biggest impact in the latest landfall forecast. Outside with live cam, still a few puddles after those showers and thunderstorms late yesterday, which were so nice, but things still look rather bleak in the long term forecast. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, August 29th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you got to enjoy at least a little rain yesterday. I know I got to see a lot. Did you? Yeah, I had the TV on and I was so enjoying the sound of the rain. I turned everything off just so I could listen for just a while. Just to listen to the rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to I got to open the door and then I put the jacket on umbrella to go pick up my little girl. But when I got there, it just all stopped. It was very hit or miss and these were movers. Here's Justin Horn. Good morning. Yeah, they moved right through. It didn't dump a lot of rain, but any rain we get at this point is a bonus. Uh, it was nice to see yesterday. Unfortunately, we are headed into more of a dry pattern going forward, so not as wet today as far as rainfall goes. We have uh, some chances maybe tomorrow, but other than that, uh, again, pretty dry. 73 at 7 o'clock. Uh, not a bad morning. Temperatures will fall into the uh, lower 70s and then by noontime, 92. We're up around 98 this afternoon, so we're below 100. There is that. Uh, a little bit of good news. And as we look at the weather headlines here, uh, hottest summer on record. Could we see that? It's looking more and more likely uh, that this will go down in the record books. I mean, I guess that's not a surprise at this point. And we just talked a little bit about Adelia. It is now a hurricane, and Florida is in its path. Storm surge is going to be a big issue here. We know Florida got hit hard last year by Ian. This is going to be a little north of that, but uh, it will have some huge impacts. If you have plans to travel to Florida, you're going to want to watch this closely. And more rain could we add to Monday's totals. We'll talk about those small chances coming up tomorrow and the extended forecast as well. We got Labor Day in the seven day forecast. Uh, much more on that in here in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. This morning, San Antonio police are looking for the suspects who randomly shot someone who is now in the hospital. Now this happened last night at Bellinger Street and Ferris Avenue. That's on the city's east side. Police say a group of people were sitting under a tree when a blue sedan pulled up and then someone inside that vehicle started shooting at the group. Only one person was hit and that person is in the hospital with a gunshot wound in their leg. An update on two San Antonio police officers shot last week during a manhunt. Both are now out of the hospital. The officer is shot while trying to arrest Jesse Garcia Jr. on outstanding warrants. Police eventually took Garcia into custody after an hours long standoff. He faces several charges and his bond totaling more than four million dollars. This morning, warnings are issued for parts of Florida's West Coast now bracing for Hurricane Idalia. As Justin mentioned about half an hour ago, the National Hurricane Center upgraded the storm to Category 1 storm, and it is quickly expected to grow into a Category 3 hurricane. And as ABC's Morgan Norwood reports, winds could top 115 miles per hour, and up to a foot of rain could fall in some areas. This morning, Idalia is intensifying as it barrels towards Florida's west coast, set to become a major hurricane with mandatory evacuations ordered along the coast in at least eight counties. Students at Eckerd College in St. Petersburg told to evacuate and to prepare their dorms for flooding from six to nine inches of rain. We had a dorm meeting and they said everybody out by five today, so it was scrambling to just get everything off the floor. The storm already battering Cuba with flooding rains and winds up to 70 miles per hour. And now Florida's so-called Big Bend, a region north of the Tampa area and south of Tallahassee, is bracing for what's being described as life-threatening storm surge. Those warm waters, that's the fuel. We expect rapid intensification to a Cat 1, a Cat 2, a Cat 3 by Wednesday morning. That's when landfall will occur. Rain, wind, and storm surge a big issue, especially here in this part of the Gulf, up to 12 feet of it. The worst of the storm surge expected tonight into tomorrow morning. While the storm is projected to hit the more sparsely populated Big Bend area, experts warn it could shift at any point. Just like Hurricane Ian did last year when it shifted south, devastating the Fort Myers area and killing 149 people in the state. Being caught by surprise could be devastating for homeowners who may be without insurance this year. More than a dozen insurance companies have stopped writing home insurance policies in the state, blaming the rising cost and higher flood risks due to climate change. 
Farmers Insurance announcing just yesterday that it's cutting more than 2,400 jobs, 11 percent of its workforce after ending home insurance coverage in Florida last month. The average policy in Florida now costs roughly $6,000. That's up 42 percent from last year. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. All eyes on Wall Street this week following a much anticipated speech by Fed Chairman Jerome Powell, who's hinting he's willing to hike interest rates yet again. Another hike means higher borrowing costs for consumers with credit cards as well as home, car and personal loans. This comes as mortgage rates already hit a 22 year high. Experts say if you're looking to make a major purchase, purchase like a home or a car, either delay it or brace for those higher costs and expect stricter requirements when it comes to applying for a loan. Powell says the Fed's target inflation rate is still 2 percent. It's trying to slow the increase in prices and cool down the overheated economy. New details on what could have started one of the Lahaina wildfires on Maui earlier this month. Now, according to the Hawaiian Electric Company, power lines that fell during high winds seem to have caused the morning fire on August 8th. In response to a lawsuit filed by the county of Maui, the electric company says power lines in West Maui had been off for more than six hours by the time a second afternoon fire began in the Lahaina area. The county says the electric company kept the power lines energized despite a fire warning. The electric company says the cause of that afternoon fire has yet to be determined. Meanwhile, officials say nearly all of the impact zones in Lahaina has been searched as the death toll stands at 115. A Wisconsin sheriff's deputy recovering after he was exposed to fentanyl. New body cam video shows the moments after Milwaukee County Deputy Adrian Williams came into contact with the deadly drug. This happened Friday as Williams was inspecting a crashed car following a crash caused by an overdose. Williams says the drug's effects were almost immediate. There you see his partner giving him Narcan, which can reverse an opioid overdose. Williams says it took two days for him to feel normal again. Wow. Glad he's okay. Good Time now, 437 and 75 degrees for now. Most of us know to be mindful of expiration dates when it comes to food and especially medication, but there are other things in your home that you might not know that need to be replaced. We'll show you some next. And we see some flashing lights over there at Highway 90 at Loop 410. Yeah, I was doing some research on this one, Steph, and Textile has it listed, I believe, westbound 90 at 410. Um, but I'm having trouble pinpointing the exact location. The map and what I'm seeing don't exactly jive, so it just know it's in that area. Yeah, definitely the lane's blocked off over there in that area. And outside with live cam, 75 degrees. Yeah, it's a start. We'll take it. Uh, maybe even some lower 70s out there. What a blessed way to start our Tuesday on GMSA. Groceries, medicine, the car registration, all things we know expire. So on your side, Marilyn Morris shows us five more things that you may not think about that have expiration dates as well. Some expiration dates are easy to see in the fridge and in the medicine cabinet, but others, not so much. Like your smoke alarms, they're critical protection, but they expire after about 10 years. Sensors can degrade over time, so look at the manufacture date or the expiration date so you know when to replace it. Same for your fire extinguisher. It lasts about 12 years. That's because over the years they can lose pressure. They can also have broken or missing parts, and they can also have corrosion. Fire extinguishers are considered hazardous materials, so you can't just throw them in the trash. You have to dispose of them properly. Then there are the kids' car seats. It's tempting to reuse them or buy used, but they're only good for six to 10 years. Standards change, safety features improve, and materials may wear out. If yours expires, check online for trade-in programs. Just like car seats, the components that make up bike helmets can degrade over time. Experts recommend replacing bike helmets about every five years, sooner if it's been in a crash. And finally, if you like to stock up on sunscreen when it's on sale, you have about three years to use it because after that, it starts to lose its protection power. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 442, 75 degrees. And up next, new video of a helicopter crash in Florida as we hear from family members of one of the victims. And welcome back. It's 444. An investigation is underway into what caused a rescue helicopter to crash into an apartment building in Florida. ABC's Victor Okendo has the details in today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, new video of that deadly helicopter crash in Florida as we hear from family members of one of the victims. My brother loved to travel and he loved golf. He loves his kids tremendously. There were three crew members on board, two of them seen here miraculously emerging from the smoke. The third fire rescue captain, Terry St. Jackson, did not survive. He was there for his friends, he was there for his family. He wanted to serve people and he died serving people. He's a hero to me. He's my big brother. The chopper crashing into this small apartment complex Monday morning sparking a fire and leaving a gaping hole. A woman inside also killed. It sounded like a bomb, an explosion went off. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll show you the damage the crash caused and the effects left on the families. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Pompano Beach, Florida. Will a downtown arena for the Spurs finally return? City records obtained by KSAT 12 show some, show rather, some movement on the idea. RJ Marcus shows us the conversations and meetings that have happened so far. January 13th was a historic night for the Spurs and city of San Antonio. After more than 20 years, the Spurs returned to the Alamo Dome and broke the NBA's all-time attendance record for a regular season game. According to records obtained by KSAT later that night, Spurs chief legal counsel Bobby Perez texted San Antonio city manager Eric Walsh thanking him for a successful evening. Five days later, on January 18th, Perez texted Walsh saying, quote, let's discuss next steps, RE, downtown, end quote. That started a recent chain of communication between the Spurs and the city. On April 10th, records show that Walsh forwarded an email to Mayor Ron Nuremberg and other city officials about an in-person meeting with Spurs Brass, including Spurs CEO R.C. Buford at the AT&T Center. A text from Perez indicated the meeting happened on April 11th. More than a month later, on May 24th, records indicate an email from Walsh showed another planned meeting with the mayor and Buford. Then on June 15th, Ben Gorzell, the city's chief financial officer, texted Spurs senior VP of Finance and Technology Joe Loomis to set up a meeting at City Hall that took place on June 23rd. The Spurs have not publicly commented on any reports about a downtown arena. Their lease at the AT&T Center expires in 2032. The city confirmed a case that the meetings were held. A spokesperson responded by saying that at this time, there's nothing to share regarding these meetings. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. A quick check of the roads with Transguide. Still problems over there at Highway 90 West at Loop 410. Yes, ma'am. So we've come to a consensus here talking to ourselves and our producer. So we think this is westbound main lanes there at 410. We've got one main lane and the shoulder currently blocked. One lane is open. So we'll keep an eye on that for you see if it's going to slow things down as uh, the morning goes on. It's been there for a little while now. I think I showed the traffic, the incident coming out around Three, yeah, 313 this morning. So how's that for an approximate time? 313, not That's perfect. <laughs> not 312, <laughs> not, not 314. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Specific. But we'll watch it for you. Yes, we will. And uh, did you get a chance to watch the rain? I did. I loved it. I mean, it, I just want that that fall day where it's kind of raining half the day and it's cool. We're not sitting in your yet. chair, read Soon. a book with a pumpkin spice latte. So, uh, you know what? I don't even <laughs> like pumpkin spice latte, but I'll drink it if that's what it means that we get some rain. Uh, that was the scene yesterday out there in Holotus. This this was kind of funny. Uh, it says, uh, yes, the rain was beautiful, but I want to thank the guy that just pulled out of the car wash for bringing the rain. Oh, yeah. Entirely possible. Yeah, you know, you can get a rain check, right? Or, well, I don't know if you can get your money back or not. But, hey, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Maybe it did bring the rain, and we got some of it here in San Antonio. Not a lot, but some. You look at the numbers. Del Rio picked up a little bit. Las Maples, one of the big winners. Medina Lake, although it's not going to help much, uh, did get around an inch of rain. The airport only recorded about seven hundredths of an inch. You look around Bear County in general. Again, not huge tolls. Quarter of an inch in Holotus. Stinson, only three hundredths of an inch. Forceville, six hundredths of an inch. But it was something. And that rain has since dissipated. Now, I don't think we're going to see a lot today. We're still going to see some warm temperatures. Yesterday, right before that rain hit, we spiked at 102, so we still did hit 100 yesterday before the rains came. Uh, today, I don't think we quite get there. We're looking at a high maybe around 98. Um, you know, that's a little bit better than it could be. And if we look at the forecast as far as rain goes, I'm not expecting much today. It's going to be a fairly quiet afternoon, mostly sunny skies. Now, as we get into tomorrow, a little bit of upper level energy moves in. The air is going to be fairly dry. So I don't know that we're going to get a lot on radar, but we could see a few spotty showers tomorrow afternoon. This is around 3 o'clock on your Wednesday, and that may last till about dinner time 
before it fades away. And unfortunately, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this is kind of our one and only rain chance, I think, throughout our seven-day forecast. The rest of it looks pretty quiet. Uh, here's weather where you live right now. 76 in San Antonio. We're hoping that number falls down just a little bit more this morning. Uh, no heat index to speak of, and I don't know that we're going to have a huge heat index this afternoon. And the big picture shows we do have some showers and storms out in far west Texas, places like El Paso, a little bit of rain in Mexico, uh, and some rain out in the Gulf of Mexico, but nothing here locally across Texas. We do have to talk about what's going on in the tropics, though. We got Franklin out here uh, that's uh, spinning. We're not going to worry too much about that. And uh, we got Adelia here, which is uh, going to be moving north. Uh, it is a hurricane now, and this is going to be a major hurricane when it makes landfall somewhere around the coastal bend of Florida. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to see some pretty big impacts with this. Uh, there's a little closer look at what we're talking about here. This is Adalia, and uh, it will move north. Right now it's got winds at 75 miles per hour. It's going to be a Category 3 storm when it makes landfall. And there's going to be some impacts as far as storm surge and very heavy rainfall, obviously, and very strong winds. Uh, there are hurricane warnings in effect for a large portion of the coastal bend there of Florida. So if you have plans to travel to Florida, you know, then this week's may not, maybe, maybe not a good week for that. Uh, here's the extended forecast. 100 Wednesday, 102 Thursday, 102 Friday. We've got triple digits all the way into Labor Day. Uh, so, you know, we were, we were thinking, would we set the record for most 100 degree days in a year? Uh, yeah, and we're going to shatter it now because we just keep adding to it. Wow. But the rain was a nice little break. It was a fantastic break. It uh, cooled us down. I mean, we went from like 102 to 80, 80 something, yeah. which was nice. Pretty wonderful. Thank yeah. you, Justin. Time now, 451, 75 degrees. Oliver Anthony continues his reign on the Billboard charts. Up next, why he says he hates to see his now viral song wrapped up in politics. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers this morning. 982 Fireball 7, Daily Force 3674 Fireball 8. Cash 5 1 8 12 21 33. Texas 2 Step 17 19 28 29. Bonus Ball 23. Your Powerball numbers 4 6 25 55 68. Powerball 26. Power Play 2. Looks like nobody won. It's up to $386 million. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> you have to play to win that. Uh, 455 Hollywood still can't get over its Barbie obsession. Plus, a viral country hit continues its reign on the Billboard charts. For Liz, what's happening in Hollywood? Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Sure, B. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Ugh. Barbies on top of the world for Warner Brothers. On Monday, the Pink Passion Project became WB's highest grossing film of all time worldwide, not adjusted for inflation. It passed the $1.342 billion mark of WB's previous highest earner, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. It's just one of many records broken or set by the film, which any day now will become the biggest money maker of 2023 worldwide, topping the Super Mario Brothers. Movie. The rich men hold the rich men. Lord knows they all just want to have total control. Another week of Oliver Anthony sticking it to the rich men north of Richmond. His viral country hit again, topping the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. Billboard points out that streams actually went up week to week, which is rare for a number one song. Rich men north of Richmond has created such a stir that it was a topic at last week's Republican presidential primary debate. Though Anthony has said it bothers him to see the topical song wrapped up in politics, and the song's title refers to those who were on that debate stage. Elton John is okay, following a fall Sunday at his home in the south of France, that according to his rep, who says John was briefly hospitalized as a precaution, but now he's back home and fine. And hopefully Liam Payne is having a better week this week than last when he had to cancel his upcoming concerts because of a kidney infection. Today's the former One Direction star's birthday. He's 30. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. Three minutes till 76 degrees. Trial date is now set for former President Donald Trump accused of trying to overturn his 2020 presidential election defeat. Up next, why Trump is criticizing the judge in the case and how he is trying to delay the proceedings for two more years. And one of the items on San Antonio's proposed city budget for 2024 is dealing with homelessness. Up next, how the city could make an additional 200 encampment sweeps next fiscal year. 
And ahead on GMSA at 6 as a hurricane heads for Florida, the local Red Cross is preparing for hurricane season. A behind the scenes look at training and supplies. And RJ is in for Stephen this morning. We'll uh, talk to him coming up about this incident on 90 at 410 over on the west side. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Former President Donald Trump's trial date is now set in the special counsel's 2020 election interference case. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with more on that and the other crucial court date Trump and co-defendants now face in Georgia. Outside with live cam, essentially rain-cooled skies have bought us five degrees. Mid-70s out there to start our Tuesday morning. Good morning to you. It is August 29th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a chance to enjoy the rain. What a wonderful sight it was. What sound, sight, smells, everything. Yeah, and even the crack of thunder here or there, Justin Horn. Uh, it was so great yesterday. Very relaxing, and we'll uh, certainly take the rain. Uh, temperatures this morning, a little cooler. Not so bad. We're at 76. I think we could drop as low as 75. A little bit later this morning, northeasterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. It's not as humid either. And by the afternoon, we're below 100. This is something to celebrate. A high of 98 degrees today. Uh, no rain, though, unfortunately, this afternoon. It'll be warm when you get out of school, but not blazing hot, I suppose, uh, relative to what we've seen most of the summer. There's a look at the highs across the state. Yeah, we'll be at around 98. Uh, Del Rio probably still eclipses that 100 mark. So does Laredo and Brownsville, but the rest of the state in the uh, 90s and even some 80s up there in the Texas Panhandle. No heat index either. That's another positive here. 98 is the forecast. It'll feel like 98 because the air again just a little bit drier. That's one of the reasons we're taking rain for the most part out of the forecast. We could see a few showers coming up tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have an update on your seven day and the tropics once again. But we'll toss it over to RJ in this morning. Good morning, mm. sir. Yeah, good Tuesday morning to everyone out there and taking a look at Transguide, a uh, crash that we've been following throughout uh, some of the morning here. We hear just uh, you guys talk about this a little bit earlier. So looking at the uh, US 90 westbound. So westbound lanes of US 90 at Loop 410, a little bit past Lackland. So of course, uh, a lot for information here for our drivers in the Lackland area that are making their way in and around uh, on base there. So uh, we were told that uh, this crash actually happened on the eastbound lanes on the other side, but that the uh, vehicle involved here got tangled into the median, so they had to uh, go ahead and uh, close down at least one of the lanes here on the westbound side of US 90 at Loop 410. So you can see that we do have emergency crews on the scene there. Uh, been kind of monitoring this over the past couple of minutes. It looks like it's going to take a little, while, a little while to kind of clear this out, but we do have at least one lane moving through there. Again, US 90 westbound at Loop 410. Again, doesn't seem to be causing a major issue in our maps, but you can see this is right there, 410 at uh, US 90. And of of course, Lackland Air, Air Force Base is right there behind me, so uh, something to keep in mind if you have to drive around this area within the next uh, 30 minutes to an hour or so. Uh, taking a look at the rest of our maps here, things looking pretty good. Uh, there was some construction that Texas was reporting down there in Von Army by uh, 35 and Loop 1604, but uh, looked a little bit earlier at that camera there in that area. It doesn't seem to be causing any major delays or any uh, significant backups. So uh, again, biggest thing we're following right there is uh, US 90 westbound lanes at Loop 410, a crash report. Uh, we've had that there since about 3.13 this morning. We'll, we'll give you the latest as we move along our 5 o'clock hour. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to find a suspect. They say shot a man in the foot overnight. Happened just before 10 p.m. in the 1800 block of West Laurel near Culebra on the west side. Police say the man in his 30s was taken to University Hospital. The gunshot wound to the ankle SAPD says the man was being followed by someone in a dark colored vehicle while walking back from a store. That's when police say someone in that vehicle started shooting at the victim. The suspect got away and has not been found. The Bear County Medical Examiner will determine what led to the death of a man in the custody of the sheriff's office. So this is a previous booking photo of 37-year-old Emmanuel Mora, who died on Sunday night. Now, the Bear County Sheriff's Office tell us that Mora was agitated and refused to be searched, leading to a struggle. ECSO says deputies used a taser on Mora, who became unresponsive about 20 minutes later. Sheriff's Office reporting that he died from a, quote, medical episode due to drugs in his system. 
The proposed San Antonio City budget for 2024 has many layers, and one of the issues city officials plan to tackle is homelessness. If the budget's approved by the city, it would set aside additional funds for an additional 200 encampment sweeps next fiscal year compared to this year. Christian Assistance Ministries helps with the homeless outreach. Their president says she agrees with the extra encampment sweeps. That's because communication with the city has gotten better over the last few years, allowing them to give their client a heads up before a sweep is made. If that's all that San Antonio was doing was cleaning out encampments and running people off, then I wouldn't say it was a good idea. Our city budget's getting ready to approve some new housing, um, some new beds for clients, some low barrier places for people to go. As we've mentioned right here on KSAT 12, city staff's been hosting a series of town hall meetings to discuss this proposed budget. The next two will be tomorrow and then again on Thursday, September 7th. Both meetings will happen at council chambers. The council is then expected to vote on a final version of the budget on or around September 14th. Now to the latest on former President Donald Trump's legal cases. Despite Trump's attorney's request for delays, a D.C. federal judge has set a 2024 trial date in the special counsel's election interference case. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports in Georgia, a judge is ordering Trump and 18 other co-defendants to appear for arraignment next week on conspiracy and racketeering charges. This morning, a trial date set. Special counsel Jack Smith in the Washington, D.C. federal courtroom as Judge Tanya Chutkin scheduled March 4th, 2024 for Smith's 2020 election interference case against former President Donald Trump to begin. That date is just one day before Super Tuesday when several states hold presidential primary elections. Trump's lawyers sought a more than two-year delay to April 2026. Trump blasting the judge's decision, calling her a biased Trump-hating judge on social media. Prosecutors pointing to Trump's behavior on a near daily basis, including his social media, as grounds for a speedy trial, saying he has publicly disparaged witnesses, he has attacked the integrity of the courts, the citizens of the District of Columbia who make up our jury pool, and this potentially prejudices the jury pool. Judge Chutkin appearing to agree, saying there is a societal interest to a speedy trial. In Georgia, former Trump White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in Fulton County Court. How are you feeling today, Mr. Meadows? Meadows, who wants his case moved to federal court in hopes of finding a more sympathetic jury, testified for more than three hours. And no ruling yet in the Meadows case, potentially leaving him to appear, along with Trump and 17 other co-defendants, on the Georgia court-ordered arraignment date of September 6th. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 507, or rather 508, 75 degrees. Local man attacked by dogs will now have to have his leg amputated. Up next, an attorney shares the legal ramifications in dog attacks for both pet owners and victims. Plus, how more Amazon customers will soon be able to ship for free without paying for a Prime membership. Looking out there with live can we're back to some humidity this morning. We're starting at 75 degrees, but the good news is we won't reach those triple digits this afternoon. We'll take anything. We'll be right back. This morning, a local man viciously attacked and nearly killed by a pack of dogs is still in the hospital. His wife tells us that his right foot will have to be amputated. His neighbor, who was also hurt while trying to save him, says he will need surgery for his bites as well. Animal Care Services says the dogs of Pitbull and German Shepherd were euthanized. San Antonio Police says that the criminal investigation into the dog owner is still underway. Personal injury attorney says holding irresponsible pet owners financially responsible can be difficult. Let's face it, I mean, we all love, you know, we all love dogs. I love my dog. And, um, you know, obviously I don't want to see that happen, um, but I think that's part of the problem is they have a tendency not to want to deem the dog dangerous. And home and renter's insurance might cover the victim of a dog bite. However, Paul Campolo says some insurance companies are also trying to get away from covering dog bite lawsuits. 512, 75 degrees. Up next, how AI could be helping you order the next time you use DoorDash. And next, why Apple's latest iPhone is most, the most ships smartphone so far this year.
Once in a lifetime is never enough. Never enough. When I wear diamonds, I feel powerful. Fun. Fabulous. I feel on top of the world. Diamonds are for everyone. I put them everywhere. <laughs> diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. Love for all. Diamonds for all. Pandora, lab grown diamonds. <laughs> honey. Honey. NyQuil Severe Honey, powerful cold and flu relief with a dreamy honey taste. NyQuil Honey, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, fever, honeylicious, best sleep with a cold medicine. Oh my goodness, is this for real? I pray for these moments. Every touchdown from every game, every Sunday afternoon. Largest comeback in NFL history. Welcome back, 516. Some non-prime Amazon customers are getting better shipping options. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Amazon is raising the minimum of purchase you need to make in order to get free shipping. Some customers who don't have Prime memberships will now have to spend at least $35 to qualify. That's up from the $25 minimum in place since 2017. Walmart already has that same $35 threshold. And new from DoorDash, an AI answering service. The company will use the technology to take phone orders for restaurants. AI would handle basic takeout and delivery calls, but humans would be available as support. Port. They'd also have more time to handle in-person customers. Well, finally, Apple's most expensive iPhone, also the most shipped in the first half of the year. That's according to a new report. Analysts say that reflects a consumer shift toward higher-end devices and away from low-range phones. Apple taking the top four places in that report. I'm Morgan Norwood with your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Weather's coming up, but first, checking in with RJ. Yeah, guys, already off to a little bit of a busier start than we would like, especially at this time at uh, during our 5 o'clock hour, 5.17 now. Taking a look at some construction. So I was looking at our maps and uh, wondering what was going on there on the northeast side. So I uh, checked in with TransGuy. They said there's some ongoing construction. People, look, people that live in this area, the Forum, Live Oak, they know that this is an ongoing issue that we're seeing right now. But it uh, does appear to be causing a little bit of a traffic delay right now as we take a quicker look at our maps here. We can see if we could zoom into that real quick and we could see that we do have a little bit of a backup past 1604. Um, so basically the camera we we're looking at, that was uh, the camera um, from 1604 to 35 South. So you can see that southbound traffic right now is being affected the most. So people driving into the downtown area, that's something that uh, you're gonna wanna keep in mind or people just in this area there. Again, Live Oak, the Forum, always a very busy, busy area right there. So uh, we're gonna take one more look here. Okay, maybe we could go there, there we go. Uh, we're gonna take one more look at this construction plus I don't want to forget because we also have this ongoing situation there at um, 90 at loop 1604 these are the westbound lanes there and uh, it looks like uh, we're starting to clear things out there there was a crash earlier cr uh, truck crashed into the medium but it looks like the 90 westbound lanes here might be getting cleared out pretty soon so that's good news there for drivers around the Lackland area all right so we'll continue to follow the very latest Justin, uh, I got some of that rain yesterday. It was really nice. I was just about <laughs> to ask you. So you make it four for four. We yeah. all got rain. Yes. Yeah, it's, yep. uh, it's a good thing. Uh, hopefully you at home got some rain as well. It was still hot before that rain arrived. It hit 102 here in San Antonio. And you look at the month of August. Honestly, this is extraordinary. Uh, we've been above 100 every single day except for one. We remember that day. We got some rain, right, from the tropical system. Uh, we are 5.5 degrees above average, and you may be saying, well, that's not a huge number, but when you're talking averages, that is a big, big number. And the total 100-degree 100, 100 days, 61 now, so we're just padding the stats. Uh, we easily are going to take the top spot. We have taken the top spot for most 100-degree days. And as we look through some more stats here, yes, 61 days, so we're two above the old record set back in 2009. And we're going to add to this. So we're going to be well into the 60s before it's all said and done. But here's the other stat. Hottest summer on record? Yeah, I think we're going to set this too. Now, obviously, we have a few more days left. But we're at 88.7, the old record last year, 88.1. Uh, and you look at all these records. They've been since basically 2009. We've been setting records here for 
not every year, but uh, since 2009, we've had some very, very hot summers, and uh, this one takes a kick. KSAT 12 hour forecast 73 at 7 o'clock, 76 and uh, 8 a.m., 92 by noontime. Mostly sunny today. We don't expect any rain. Temperatures stay below 100, I think, around 98. So this may be. Uh, one of those rare days here in August where we're below that mark. We're going to get northeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. So for those who didn't get much rain yesterday, there is going to be an elevated fire danger. We need to mention that. Uh, again, no rain this afternoon. This is around 5 o'clock. This computer model doesn't show much. But as we get into tomorrow, quiet to start. And then I think by the afternoon we could see a few showers and storms pop up. This is around 3, 8, uh, 3 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, just some stray to isolated showers. Anything we see would wouldn't last very long and we're expecting some pretty dry air at the surface. So it's, these aren't going to be uh, big rainmakers, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a little bit on the radar tomorrow. Weather where you live right now, we've got clear skies in San Antonio 75. Uh, there's not much of a heat index and I don't expect much one uh, much of one today because the air is going to stay relatively dry. You'll see those dew points uh, generally uh, dropping off from where they are now in the upper 60s. And I think they could actually fall into the low 60s, even 50s in some cases. So that, that, that's a, a dry heat. We won't have to worry about uh, heat index at all. Uh, as we look at the tropical update, I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's worth mentioning again. We've got Aldalia here, and she is really starting to uh, strengthen. Now a hurricane, and winds are at 75 miles per hour gusting to 90. Uh, the latest track takes it towards the coastal bend of Florida. So you're talking between Tallahassee and Gainesville here is where uh, some of the heaviest of the rain will be. And that's where they have hurricane warnings. Storm surge could be 8 to 12 feet. This thing takes a turn out into the Atlantic and uh, weakens as a tropical storm. But uh, yes, hurricane warnings posted for the uh, coastal bend of Florida. And that includes Tampa, where they could get some pretty significant storm surge there as well after being hit by Ian last year. So uh, folks in Florida are going to be doing a lot of prepping next couple days. You see the triple digits today, the exception. But then uh, we jump back into the triple digits, even going into Labor Day next week. I know NFL doesn't start for a couple weeks, but this yep. could mess up a bunch of college games this weekend. Oh. Yeah, I was just thinking about that because mm -hmm. I know Florida State plays mm -hmm. LSU, but I think they play Thursday, and then I don't know about the University of Florida. Yeah. Oh, no. We will find <laughs> out. Yeah. Uh, 522, 75 degrees. And up next, how riders striking in Hollywood are getting a multi-million dollar boost in support. Plus a first look at Coleman Domingo in Ruston. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, 982, Fireball 7. Daily 4, 3674, Fireball 8. Cash 5, 1, 8, 12, 21, 33. Your Texas 2-step, 17, 19, 28, 29. Bonus ball, 23. Powerball numbers 4, 6, 25, 55, 68. Powerball 26, power play 2. Nobody won the jackpot. Go out there. <laughs> we'll be right back. There is more support for writers on strike in Hollywood, plus a first look at the new film, Rustin. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Donations for striking Hollywood workers keep coming in and going out. The Entertainment Community Fund, formerly the Actors Fund, has raised more than $7.6 million and says it's distributed nearly five and a half million bucks in emergency financial assistance to more than 2,600 film and television workers. Tuesday is the 120th day of the Writers Guild strike and the 47th day of the sag after strike. So an epic demonstration in our nation's capital, organized in eight weeks. Do this, Dr. King. Own your power. Here's your first look at Rustin, starring Coleman Domingo as Bayard Rustin, an architect of the 1963 March on Washington. This first teaser trailer was released on the 60th anniversary of the march. The film debuts in select theaters November 3rd and on Netflix November 17th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Tuesday morning time check, 26 past the hour, 75 degrees. Testimony is expected to begin today in the case of a San Antonio rapper who was gunned down two years ago. Up next, a look back at the case so far and where you can watch the live court proceedings. More possible trouble for Disney. Up next, why the company's special effects artists are looking to unionize. Plus, why some American Airlines customers could see a $350 refund very soon. 
As of this morning, there have now been at least 500 mass shootings in the U.S. this year, according to the Gun Violence Archive. Too many families are having to bury their loved ones. Too many children are being left without mothers and fathers lost to census gun violence. Up next, what some lawmakers are proposing as new solutions to the problem. Looking out there with live cam, we'll be back to the heat again today after that nice rain we got yesterday. But the good news is it won't be the triple digits we're getting used to seeing out there. And a good morning to you, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 29th of August. Thanks for joining us. Uh, everybody enjoyed the rain, right? Oh, oh yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, went on a nice little run the early part of the evening. So, yeah, that felt right. good. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty nice. I, for, for me, it was like right mm -hmm. before pickup time. Sure. So I had my umbrella, my jacket. And yeah. so when I finally went to go pick, uh, you know, Rooney up, she was yeah. like, why are you wearing a jacket? And I was like, it was raining. It was raining. <laughs> uh, I was in the same boat. I picked up the kids and it was raining, but we just, you know, just soaked it in, literally. Uh, we didn't use an umbrella or anything because it's just so nice to have it, uh, have, it uh, have the rain falling. And that was the case across most of San Antonio. We got a lot of pictures in on KSAC Connect, just like this one. Uh, the pool is overflowing, a welcome sight. Agreed. We had uh, some good rain in spots. The, the numbers weren't huge, but, uh, you know, just the fact that we've had rain last week and then again this week, that's an improvement. It really, really is. And as we look at the weather where you live outside right now, San Antonio sitting at 75. Again, my hope is that maybe that number comes down just a little bit more in the next couple of hours. 78, New Braunfels, 74. That's pretty comfortable in Seguin. And you're in the 60s. And burning in Kerrville this morning, not bad at all. Great way to start your day. Temperatures by 9 a.m. will be in the low 80s. It warms up pretty quickly. Noontime 92. Uh, but we do expect to stay below 100 this afternoon. Just shy of it, 98, uh, with mostly sunny skies and uh, no rain today. Unfortunately, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we likely will be back in the triple digits next few days. We're going to talk about that forecast. We've got a countdown, which... For Stephanie does include Halloween. I know she's excited about that. How many days away are we? And uh, we'll look at that seven day forecast for you. But for now, let's check in with RJ. I think we got some issues out there now. Yeah, guys, uh, it's been a very busy morning so far, but a couple of things have cleared out. So that's good news. We mentioned that construction that was going on a little bit earlier in northeast side. Saw a convoy there kind of clear things out. This is something that just popped up. I'll check on this here in just a little bit. That's 35 and Zarzamora Street. So we'll give you a little bit of an update here in a little while. Um, we also had a crash earlier this morning that was on uh, US 90 westbound 410. That has been cleared up. So we're just kind of giving you a look here at the rest of the city 37 at Hackberry traffic moving pretty good there loop 410 at New Braunfels traffic moving pretty smooth there as we mentioned uh, citywide things looking pretty good uh, I do I will check on that 35 and that's motor thing here in just a bit I do want to mention that we have some excavation work that is uh, that is reportedly finally clearing out so this is good news here for our drivers there 151 the SeaWorld area um, and you know especially with school starting there in the north side district uh, we're talking about Brennan Holmes uh, John Jay a lot of these um, a lot of these drivers use 151 to get around that area so we've seen alternating lane closures westbound frontage road from Petranco to Ingram uh, that's expected to wrap up today one more day of pain out there uh, expected to take place here from 9 to 3 p.m. so that's some good news out there for our drivers in that area again I'll check in on that uh, issue there at 35 in Zarzamora and give you the very latest as we move along this morning Mark and Stephanie Thank you, RJ. New this morning, investigators are trying to figure out what sparked a late night house fire on the city's west side. This was a scene last night just after 1030 at Crystal Bow and Blackberry. That's near 410, not far from Leon Valley. We're told the home was in the process of being rebuilt. It was destroyed in the flames along with some trees. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Today is the 241st day of 2023 and the U.S. has seen a lot more mass shootings this year. According to data from the Gun Violence Archive, the number of gun incidents have hit a high not seen in at least a decade. And as seen as John Lawrence reports, a study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine says one in 14 gunshot victims will be shot again within a year. Gunfire erupted at the Southern Restaurant and Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky, early Sunday morning. Enough is enough. We can and we must do more. 
Police say at least two adult males were killed in the shooting while five others were hospitalized. This is among the nearly 500 mass shootings in the U.S. in 2023, according to the Gun Violence Archive. Both CNN and the GVA define a mass shooting as an incident where at least four people are killed or injured, not including the shooter. Too many families are having to bury their loved ones. Too many children are being left without mothers and fathers lost to census gun violence. The GVA says the U.S. has had more mass shootings this year since at least 2013, which is when the nonprofit group started tracking gun violence. We need more stringent background checks. There are plenty, a plethora of things we can do to tighten our laws. Data from the GVA also shows more than 20 mass shootings have erupted in the U.S. during the week that ended August 27th. We have a violent gun problem in our country. We know that. More than 50 percent of U.S. adults say they or a family member experienced a gun-related incident in their lives, according to a survey from the Kaiser Family Foundation earlier this year. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Federal authorities are investigating nearly 5,000 pilots suspected of falsifying their medical records to conceal serious conditions that could make them unfit to fly here in the U.S. At least 60 pilots have been ordered to cease flying while their records are under review. The pilots under scrutiny are reportedly military veterans who told the Federal Aviation Administration they were healthy enough to fly. However, they did not report they were also collecting veterans benefits for disabilities that could bar them from the cockpit, which is required by law. About 600 pilots are licensed to fly for passenger airlines. Authority is also investigating to determine if any of the pilots should be referred to the Justice Department to face charges of defrauding the benefits system. Right now, Hurricane Idalia is headed towards Florida and has the potential to join a list of eye storms now retired because of their extremely devastating and deadly impacts. When a storm name is retired, it is removed from the official name list used by the National Hurricane Center and can't be used in a given ocean again. In the Atlantic Ocean, 96 storm names have been retired since 1954. Of those, 14 were eye storms, and that's the most retired of any letter. 12 of the 14 ice storms have names have been retired in the last 22 years, including 2022's Hurricane Ian, 2021's Hurricane Ida, and 2020's Hurricane Iota. All were very deadly storms with between 80 to 150 deaths. The second most common retired names are F, names with 10 overall. Walt Disney Pictures visual effects crews have filed for an election to unionize. It involves more than 80 percent of Disney's in-house visual effects team. The workers are behind some of Disney's latest remakes, including a live action adaptation of Lion King, Beauty, of the Be Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. If the elections turn out in favor of unionizing, the studio will be obligated to hold good faith negotiations. Just weeks earlier, Marvel Studios' VFX crews also moved to unionize. The Marvel and Disney filings are a first for VFX professionals. Time now is 538 and 75 degrees for now. Next, the San Antonio rapper's murder hitting a courtroom this week after a two-year wait where you can watch next. Looking out there with live cam starting at 75, not too bad. And okay, double digits for today. That's positive out there. We're checking with Justin to see what we can expect for the rest of the week coming up. Today, testimony expected to begin in the case of an aspiring San Antonio rapper gunned down two years ago. Here's Erica Hernandez with a look back at the case and the woman accused of the murder. A murder case involving two aspiring musicians is heading to trial. The victim, Martel DeRowan, a San Antonio rapper who went by the name Cordone. The suspect, an aspiring singer. Sasha Scar will now be facing a judge and a jury in the 186th District Courtroom as they will decide if she is guilty or not guilty of murder. This is open court, the trial of Sasha Scar. A murder at an upscale apartment complex caught many by surprise in January 2021. 34-year-old Martel DeRowan was found shot to death and the search was on for his killer. Here's a look back at the case and what led to the arrest of Sasha Scar. 
police get a call asking if they can do a welfare check on Martel DeRowan at his apartment at the Towers Complex in the 16,700 block of La Cantera Parkway. When they arrive, they find DeRowan dead from a gunshot wound. DeRowan was a known San Antonio rapper. He was even related to singing sensation Beyonce. The next day, police named 21-year-old Sasha Scar as a suspect. Scar, also an aspiring singer, was apparently dating DeRowan according to the arrest affidavit. Scar, at the time of the murder, already had a pending case in Travis County. She was on bond and charged with aggravated robbery after an apparent drug deal that ended in gunfire and left her boyfriend dead. After a two-week search, Scar was found and arrested. According to the arrest affidavit, surveillance footage from the apartment complex put Scar at the scene. Moments after the shooting, she was seen walking along the hallway. Scar is now facing a first-degree felony murder charge. The trial begins on August 29th in the 186th District Court by presiding judge Christina Escalona. If Scar is found guilty, she is facing five to 99 years or life in prison. KSAT 12 will be following this trial and live streaming it on KSAT.com, KSAT's YouTube page, and KSAT Plus. Stay with us for all the latest court proceedings by signing up for our open court newsletter. Time, Time. now. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> 544 and 75 degrees for now. Get ready for that new Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich when you can take a new bite of the new honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich. You had me at hello. We've been waiting for that one. We have. Uh, now looking out there with Trans Guy, looking at I-10 at Provence. Things are moving there. Also, usually it's busy over here at I-35 at Maine. Things look good so far, but we're going to get another check-in with RJ Marcus later on. Welcome back. It's 547. In your morning consumer headlines, the U.S. Department of Transportation has slapped American Airlines with the largest fine ever for holding passengers on board for too long. The U.S. Department of Transportation is ordering American to pay just over $4 million. That's for tarmac delays on 43 flights between 2018 and 2021. About 5,800 passengers were affected. Current rules require airlines to allow passengers a chance to get off the plane after three hours on the runway or four hours for international flights. If all the affected American airline passengers are paid equally, that amounts to about $350 per person. America says delays were due to weather events and promises it has invested in new technology to help prevent such instances in the future. Chick-fil-A fans now have a new menu item on the menu, that honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich that we've been waiting for. The popular fast food chain says the new sandwich features an original Chick-fil-A topped with creamy pimento cheese and pickled jalapenos. Now, the honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich should be ready for you to order today. Is it on the app, Mark? It's on the app, <gasps> and you can get it with the regular chicken Chick-fil-A, uh, the original patty, the spicy filet, or you can get it with a grilled filet, too. So it's right there. What do you all think? All our options. Mm -hmm. Oh, although we, we have to wait till after what? Yeah, it's all locked up till 1030 this morning. <laughs> OK, but at least it's yeah. ready to go, right? Yeah. We'll have to try Justin, it can you grab that for us at uh, your dr favorite drive through? Uh, I will do my best. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. See if we get our order. Uh, 549 right now. Let's check in on traffic with <laughs> RJ. <laughs> yeah. OK, we got a developing situation, guys, here. I-35 southbound lanes at uh, South Zazamora Street. You can see they're shutting down the southbound parts of the uh, interstate here. There was a reported crash a little bit earlier. It uh, uh, reportedly involved an 18-wheeler and uh, may have involved some other vehicles as well. And I was told right now by TransGuide that uh, they are shutting down this area because uh, there's a lot of debris on the highway. Uh, we are uh, planning to send our uh, Kate, uh, Katrina Weber out there here in just a bit to give us a report from the ground. But again, I-35 at Zarzada Street, that is right now uh, being closed. So traffic max not sure showing um, a significant delay right now, but we do expect this to change here in just a bit. So again, uh, the South Park Mall area, Zarzamora Street's right there, Southwest Military's right here. So again, this is a developing situation. As we take a look at uh, our extended map here, you can see that uh, for the most part, things looking pretty good uh, the rest of the way. But again, this is kind of the biggest issue that we're following at the moment. I'm gonna see if we could find just another camera here. I think uh, Millet Southwest Military, okay, so 
Uh, there's another camera in that area there from this uh, from this crash, but it looks like uh, our best shot is here. Again, 35 southbound at Sarzamoda Street. That is closed for the moment as a uh, crews uh, investigate a crash that may have involved an 18 wheeler. And you can see that traffic is being diverted off to um, one of the exit ramps. I believe that's a uh, Zarzamora Street that they're asking people to get off of the highway on. Okay, RJ, mm -hmm. thank you. If I recall, we put in a custom order with Justin mm -hmm. about a week or so ago, and he's cooked something up. Yeah. Yeah, the, the rain, we, we had some <laughs> Not bad. slightly cooler temperatures yesterday, some rain. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to come through this week, though. No, the countdown. Oh, the countdown. Yeah, remember we asked <laughs> you. I think you were asking about rain. No, no, no. They, you that delivered too. on the rain. Oh, so too. you get a steak dinner out of that. Oh, appreciate it. But that. we asked you to do upcoming uh, countdowns on the holidays. You did do that, too. Yes. Thank you yes. on that, too. Uh, let's take a look at the countdown. And uh, Steph put in a special order for... Halloween. Halloween, your favorite holiday. Yeah. Yes. All right, so let's see. Let's go, Justin. Okay, here we go. Autumn begins in 25 days. Okay, yay. Yeah, we can, yeah, we'll for that for sure. Uh, solar eclipse. This is what I'm excited about, the <laughs> angular solar eclipse. That's in 46 days. Okay. It really is going to be awesome. Okay. Uh, we, you got to get outside and check that out. Uh, then Halloween, there you go. 63 days away, Steph. <laughs> You got the outfit planned boo. out. Boo. Not, no, not the normal boo. <laughs> like boo like a ghost. The, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the good boo. Okay. Uh, average first freeze is 92 days away. So we're, we're getting there. Uh, listen, it is going to get better. We keep, we keep saying that. I know uh, it's hot this week, but there's got to be some improvements. We're just not far off from some of the cooler temperatures. That's just you know how it works. Uh, rainfall yesterday, Las Maples, 0.89, Del Rio, Three hundredths of an inch. Bandera about half an inch. Medina Lake picked up over an inch of rain. Some good numbers yesterday with some of those showers and storms that came through. Uh, San Antonio International Airport picked up about seven hundredths. Again, these aren't huge numbers, but it was good enough, and it did cool us down. We spiked at 102 yesterday right before that rain came through. 98 today, 99 in Elmendorf, 95 for Oaks Ranch. We're going to get a northeasterly wind, which will dry us out a little bit, and uh, that should keep rain out of the picture today. The air's... Uh, or the atmosphere is pretty stable. But as we get into tomorrow, we'll have a little disturbance roll in. And I think that could be enough to scare up some uh, showers and maybe a couple storms as we get into uh, the afternoon tomorrow, 3 o'clock, 3 to 4, maybe 5 o'clock. We can see a little bit of activity on the radar. But the air is still going to be pretty dry, so these aren't going to be big rainmakers. And I don't think it'll be as widespread as it was yesterday. Let's go outside for you right now, 75. Humidity is still at 79%, so it's humid for the moment, but uh, I think these dew points and the humidity come down some. Northwesterly winds at about 6 miles per hour, and dew points are in the 60s uh, for the most part. You've even got some lower 60s up here around Comfort. So that's that dry area to the north that's trying to push in, and the dew points come down into the low 60s later today, which is more in a comfortable range. There will be no heat index this afternoon that we'll have to deal with. Now the flip side to that, you get dry air, gusty winds, Fire threat is there, especially for those that didn't get rain yesterday. We see these patches of orange. That's where you have a very high fire threat. Austin, over to Bryan College Station, across parts of the Edwards Plateau, here around San Antonio, we're in the high range. We still got to be careful. I mean, I know that we did get rain yesterday, but it's uh, entirely possible that a, a grass fire could get going and still spread pretty easily. Extended forecast, 100 Wednesday, 102 Thursday and Friday. There'll be some hot days there. Uh, 101 over the weekend, Labor Day right now, we're looking at 100, uh, so things do quiet down. And I need to correct myself from earlier. We were talking about Adalia. We'll have some more information on that coming up. I said that Florida State and LSU play uh, on Thursday. They do not, as RJ corrected me. They play Sunday in Orlando, mm -hmm. and Florida plays in uh, Utah on Saturdays, so the college football games may be okay. Well, that's good news. Yeah. See, RJ, that's why you're not allowed to go home ever, because you're like a fa fact <laughs> <laughs> like yes, the most pleasant fact checker <laughs> ever. Yes. It's the like clock. an encyclopedia <laughs> over there. Yes. He is. Thank you. And yep. thank you, Justin. Yep. Thank you to our whole team. 554, 75 degrees. Looks like you're winning a lot of numbers. Pick 3982, Fireball 7, Daily 4, 3674, Fireball 8. Cash 5, 1, 8, 12, 21, 33, Texas 2 Step, 17, 19, 28, 29, Bonus Ball 23. No, but no one won Powerball, so it's up to $386 million for tomorrow night. And Mega Tonight is at $67 million. We'll be back.
The San Antonio leaders want to tackle homelessness as part of the new city budget. That could lead to more encampment sweeps next year. We'll have details. And checking Transky, we have flashing lights there at 35 at Zarzamora. RJ is tracking this incident for you.